Hello everyone and welcome back. By now, I think most of us have heard about the global cooldown changes coming in Battle for Azeroth. Now what these changes do is put the large majority of abilities on the global cooldown. This includes buffs, defensives, mobility, utility, whatever kind of ability it is that you are using, it is more than likely going to be on the global cooldown. There are only very few exceptions of abilities that are not on the global cooldown. The few exceptions that we can mention are every active mitigation for tanking, a few mobility spells like Infernal Strike, Heroic Leap, Disengage, and Shadow Step, and there are very few other abilities that don't incur the global cooldown. There is a full list in the description and down below of abilities that either don't have global cooldown or have a reduced global cooldown because of its utility, but there are very few. So let's just talk about how this feels first. What this really does for every single class in spec, except for healers, is that it makes haste feel needed and absolutely necessary to function. Coming from Legion, where we can use different abilities and have different macros, where we can use one or two abilities with an Anyu's Trinket, this gameplay feels very, very slow. Since stacking offensive cooldowns still offers a lot of damage, the nerf is going to hit especially hard because stacking these cooldowns is still going to be your best option. Let's just go over a beginning of pull scenario. At the beginning of a pull, you might have to lust first, use your cooldown number one, your second cooldown, maybe an Anyu's Trinket, and what this really means is that you are now six seconds into the pool and have cast no abilities that actually do damage. All you've been doing is preparing to damage. Now after these six seconds of preparing and getting your buffs up and everything you need going, now is when you can DPS. Also what this means is that for the large majority of classes, mobility is going to be a greater loss of DPS than it is currently in Legion. And one of the bigger things that this impacts is the fact that a tanking class needs to be both offensive and defensive at the same time. A tank needs to be offensive in picking up aggro and using abilities that do damage, and then defensive at the same time by using abilities that decrease the amount of damage that we take in. Whether that's via mitigation, healing, absorption, or a defensive cooldown, this global cooldown change makes these choices seem like more of a punishment when we might need to do both at a moment's notice. So let's just go over how this can be helped and how this global cooldown change can actually be reverted to still feel good. If we put only defensive and mobility abilities off of the global cooldown, things will still feel good. What this means is that offensive abilities and offensive cooldowns are still going to incur that global cooldown and slow down the game like Blizzard wants, but the ability to respond to certain situations with mobility or any kind of defensive ability in order to not be punished by the mechanics is going to feel responsive and good. Let's take a look at tanks for example. The ability to use Avenger Shield or a Hammer of the Righteousness in conjunction with the Light of the Protector to recover from any spike damage is very crucial but in the current moment with this global cooldown cannot be done. A Death Knight's ability to Death Strike and the ability to use Rune Tap or Blood Tap if you run that will allow you to mitigate a lot of that damage. A warrior's ability to use shield slam or thunderclap and bolster at the same time in order to respond to increased physical damage. Druids being able to mangle or thrash and use a frenzied region at that moment when that frenzied region would be best used. A monk's ability to throw a keg and to expel harm at the same time as well. Or a demon hunter's ability to fracture and spirit bomb in order to pick that up and recover, making sure they guarantee uptime on their debuff and heal a little bit. This global cooldown change does not really feel like it fits the description given by the devs in the Q&A. They said that this was more for action reaction, which is more for turn-based slower RPGs. What this really feels like is that you are punished for using the spell queuing system. If you try to get ahead and queue up an ability half a second or one second too early, this will lead to the inability to properly respond to any situation or any of your reactions being delayed by that global cooldown. Now, if the developers do not want to change this global cooldown change, one big remedy is to slow down the rest of the game as well. Cast and swing timers that depend on player reaction are very short right now, and if we are going to be incurring this global cooldown to slow down our gameplay, then the NPC's speed has to be slowed down as well. In order for players to react properly to any cast bars that they're seeing, that means that those cast bars should have a longer cast as well. 
Now, I would hate for the game to take this turn, but with the current global cooldown change, our reactions are not the same and we feel punished for actively trying to queue up our next ability. So by slowing down the actions of the NPCs or giving us back the ability to react off of the global cooldown, that will bring back the action reaction portion of the game. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. This is a topic of a lot of controversy. And I'm trying to give Blizzard two suggestions here, one to undo their change and one that keeps their change but slows the game down tremendously, which I would not like to see, but it at least will give us time to react to the current situation. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, good luck out there.